Yale University, former chairman at Morgan Stanley Asia, and author of the book Accidental Conflict, America, China, and the Clash of False Narratives. Congrats on the book, Stephen. Good to see you again. Uh, last time we saw you a month ago, you said you'd never been more bearish on China. So how would you kind of weigh in on this debate? Well, there certainly are cross currents. I think the investment community, as you framed it, you know, wants to believe in the post lockdown, post zero COVID snapback, uh, which which is certainly um, in the process of unfolding right now. The questions I have is, uh, you know, what happens after the snapback? And my concerns about China, which are fairly new for me because I've been an optimist on China for so long is that the medium to longer term growth trajectory is going to fall well short of uh, what we're used to and what China is used to. And, you know, that reflects <clears throat> the tough demographics, which are playing out as expected, but much sooner uh, than uh, we thought in conjunction with a really tough uh, productivity uh, outlook, given the regulations. Um, that have been put on the tech sector and the shift in emphasis to low productivity state owned enterprises. So, you know, we know from economics, if, if your uh, population, your working age population is shrinking, you've got to boost your productivity growth to offset it to achieve your growth target. And for China, it's going the other way. Right. So let me quote what Steve Weiss said in halftime last hour. They were talking about Alibaba. He said, I'd be a seller of Alibaba. I don't know why anyone would want to own a Chinese stock here. Geopolitical tensions are in flames. You can't trust the accounting. I'd be a seller of all the Chinese stocks. Would you agree with that? Well, look, his, his point is um, too extreme for me, but I, I do worry a lot about uh, the sharp deterioration in the relationship between the U.S. and China. You know, in the last five years, we've... <clears throat> gone, Kelly, from a trade war to a tech war to the early stages of a new Cold War. You know, in just the last couple of weeks, we've had, you know, the surveillance balloon slash airship, if you want to really be accurate, uh, mounting pressures on Taiwan. And just, you know, in the last 24 hours, um, the U.S. is um, uh, starting to uh, uh, indicate that it's going to release hard evidence that China is providing, quote, lethal support to Russia's military effort uh, in uh, Ukraine. And, you know, these are, um, I think, potentially very inflammatory allegations that uh, will take a, uh, a conflict from, that's already tough from bad to worse. So I, I just want to highlight what you said. You said we've gone from a trade war to a tech war to sort of a new Cold, a Cold War. War. Yeah. And, yeah. And what is that? Where does where do we go from there? Because it doesn't sound like a great trajectory to be on. It's, it's certainly not. I mean, you know, the risk of a Cold War, as we learned, you know, in the uh, the 60s, is that, um, you know, there's always a possibility that it, it could uh, uh, inadvertently turn hot. You know, we've had this uh, significant escalation uh, of conflict uh, between the U.S. And, and China. My book argues that it's it's based on a lot of false premises or false narratives that reflect uh, deep misunderstandings that each nation has with respect to other. But but you know, irrespective of the, uh, the the cause and effect, we are where we are. And so when you have uh, these uh, this, this escalation. That is the best image I have is like the high octane fuel of uh, conflict escalation. It can be ignited by the slightest spark. And, you know, in the 60s, we had, you know, the Berlin crisis, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis. We came close. You know, Cold Wars are dangerous. Uh, and yet the Chinese um, uh, economy and what could we, uh, Stephen, the just with the last couple seconds here, is there any, what can we do now if we don't want to keep going down this path? Should we, do we need to be more realistic and hardline about it, given the risks, or, or is there some way to soften no, it? Or? I, my, read my book. I mean, I, I'm, I'm being facetious here, but <laughs> I argue for a relationship solution, uh, not uh, you know uh, beating uh, the drum of uh, hardline conflict. We are not going to force China to, to do it our way, and China is not going to force us to do it our way. We have to come up with a mutual framework 
to engage one another. Are investors You're, helping on that front? If they, you know, the ones cross investment, that kind of thing, business. I mentioned Wyndham, people opening, doing business there. No, I, I, I would like to see uh, more, um, more support, a more vocal um, clamoring for a, a, a more collaborative engagement between the two nations. And the business community can play an important role in that. But thus far, their silence has been deafening. Interesting. All right, Stephen Roach, thanks for all your time today. Good to check in with you again.